Let's cross the studio. Emma James with Media Watch. Good evening. Hi there. Now then, uh, you've been looking at reactions to the uh, election in Israel and the exit polls. Yes, obviously very early days at the moment. Uh, the polls only closed a short time ago, but we do, of course, have exit polls already. They don't paint the clearest of pictures, but it does look as though possibly things haven't gone as well for Benjamin Netanyahu as he might have hoped. Uh, and indeed, some people had expected him to do better. Um, Haaretz has actually put together an average of all of the uh, exit polls that have been done, and it shows him falling short of the 61 seats that he needs. Uh, just 56 um, he has secured according to those polls. Uh, so there are the figures there. Uh, I think Bibi was winking at us there. So I, didn't, I didn't actually notice that earlier on today. Um, so yes, rather a tongue-in-cheek look at the uh, exit poll results there from, uh, from Haaretz. Um, looking at uh, what will happen next, well, uh, this journalist is saying, confused, you're not alone. Um, here's the problem with today's election. Uh, neither Netanyahu nor Benny Gantz uh, the, from the Blue and White Party have gained a 61-seat majority, so it's President Reuven Rivlin who is likely to determine which of the two gets the mandate to try and form a coalition. Um, that appears to have been confirmed, at least to an extent, by uh, the President's official Twitter account, um, saying that he will be meeting uh, with representatives of the parties once they have a clear idea of those particular results. Um, the Jerusalem Post's take on this is an interesting one. Uh, they are asking whether or not um, Reuben Rivlin, uh, Reuben Rivlin, excuse me, would will actually take revenge on Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, they ask in this article, imagine that you are 80 years old and devoted your life to a cause that your father and grandfather believed in and then a rival turned your cause upside down in a way you find abhorrent. Now, they say that he missed his chance before when he could have taken the job away from Benjamin Netanyahu. They're wondering whether he will do the same thing again this time around. Perhaps uh, it could be different. One word of caution, though, and this is an important one um, from this uh, Jerusalem-based... Uh, uh, journalist. Uh, hey guys, just a reminder, don't be like blue and white in April. Don't believe the exit polls are actual results because of course back in April, <laughs> doesn't seem all that long ago, when we last had an Israeli election, people were making the wrong predictions. So we will have to wait and see exactly how this one pans out. Indeed, and our analysis and reaction continues. Um, we move on to a, a real change of tone now. Uh, a furore and a publicity coup for the American version of the programme Dancing with the Stars. Yes, absolutely. There was a huge uh, fuss over the fact that Sean Spicer, the former press secretary to the Donald Trump administration, uh, was actually invited to be one of the celebrities, in inverted commas, on Dancing with the Stars for this season. It's the 28th season of the show. Um, he tweeted this beforehand, <laughs> clearly not expecting too much of himself. Uh, to be fair, I really don't have the moves to shake my booty. Let's take a look uh, for ourselves so we can judge. <laughs> He's got the you should be able to hear the music because it is the Spice Girls, Spice Up Your Life. It's supposed to be a salsa, I believe, or is it a samba? I'm not quite sure. Not too good on my uh, ballroom dancing. Um, but anyway, yes, that's... <laughs> I'm hoping we can see some you, more look, of those images. You couldn't tell from the footwork what it was, but don't worry. Uh, no, indeed, indeed. Uh, we could have a look at those images again, because they are worth repeating, I think it's fair to say. Um, lots of people weren't too impressed. The Daily Beast says it was the most embarrassing Dancing with the Stars debut ever, period. Wow, well, uh, One harsh, of the judges was unimpressed too, saying it's like you were being attacked by a swarm of wasps. So I think they've rather enjoyed reporting on that one. Eight million people tuned in last night to watch that, which is about on a par with the normal uh, season openers. Um, some people people don't mind that he's taking part. Uh, you got my vote, Sean Spicer, says this person. Keep having fun. It was fun to watch. It is entertainment after all. But lots of people cannot get past the lies that he told uh, when he was the figurehead, the, uh, the spokesman of the Trump administration. Of course, um, belittling the media over their, uh, their reports about the size of the inauguration crowd. He lied, blatantly lied, saying it was the biggest inauguration crowd ever. Um, he also uh, compared Bashar al-Assad, Syria's uh, leader, with Hitler, uh, seeming to make a more flattering comparison, really, saying even Hitler didn't use chemical weapons. Uh, so <laughs> that was rather ignorant, wasn't it's it? It's a very, very strange thing to have said, and a lot of people can't forget it. Lots of reactions on Twitter like this one. I'm sorry, I just don't see how it's worth it. Uh, this person saying, have never missed a season but will not be watching this one, refuse to normalise or redeem Sean Spicer. And that hashtag, boycott DWTS, is doing the rounds. Lots of people using that one. 
uh, Ana Navarro Cardenas, who was a Republican but is now very anti-Trump and barely says anything positive about the Republicans, uh, says apparently embarrassing himself lying on behalf of Trump was not undignified enough for one lifetime. Uh, you could possibly agree with her on that one. And this is probably my favourite one of all. Earlier in the career of Sean Spicer, <laughs> there is a remarkable likeness that should actually be dancing and it does look rather like him, although probably has a better sense of rhythm. That is the Teletubby Dipsy. Oh, I bow to your superior there you go, there you go. I had young children at the time. Yeah. <laughs> Tinky, Winky, Dipsy, La La and Poe. There you go. OK, jolly good. Mm. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> um, now, interestingly, uh, Sean Spicer has managed to earn himself even more critics by tweeting something a little bit bizarre. He has brought the issue of religion into his appearance on Dancing with the Stars. Um, he tweeted this in reply to Governor Mike Huckabee, who was voicing his support. Clearly the judges aren't going to be with me. Let's send a message to Hollywood that those of us who stand for Christ won't be discounted. May God bless you. Uh, I've never seen the hashtag Christ used quite like that. Um, I don't know what he was thinking. I think he's thinking... It's the Christian right. They will all vote for good Republicans. It's a very odd thing to have said, but my the best reaction by far to this came from Trevor Noah of The Daily Show. And Jesus said unto them, text 1899 to help Sean Spicer <laughs> Salsa triumph over James Van Der Beek's Foxtrot. It really does beg a belief. Who knows what will happen next? Oh, Emma James, proving it takes two to tango. <laughs> that was a very bad oh, one. Oh, dear. Emma with me to watch. Thank you very much indeed.